Imagine being able to pick your own fresh vegetables straight from your garden. With our easy seed starting guide, you can make it a reality. Join us as we show you how to start seeds like a pro so that you can enjoy the taste of homegrown goodness in no time. Let's get your garden growing. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening. If you're eager to enjoy the taste of fresh homegrown vegetables, now is the perfect time to start. By sowing your seeds indoors, you can give yourself an early start and provide the warmth and light levels required for optimal growth. In fact, the beginning of March is an excellent time to get started as the increasing daylight hours will help your plants thrive. But where to begin? The first thing is to guide you through the equipment that you'll need to get started so that you can sow your seeds with confidence and enjoy the bountiful harvest in no time. Once you're ready to start sowing, it's important to have the right equipment on hand. Cell trays are a popular choice and come in various sizes to suit different types of seeds. For small seeds like lettuce or radish, smaller cell trays work well, while larger and deeper trays are better for larger seeds like broad beans or father beans. If you're planning to do smaller bulk sowings, pots can also be a good choice as they allow for more flexibility in terms of planting and transplanting. If you're looking to sow seeds that require higher temperatures to germinate, such as chilies and peppers, a propagator can be a game changer. Propagators come in both heated and unheated varieties and are ideal for providing the warmth your seeds need to get a strong start. No matter what type of seeds you're planting, having the right equipment can make all the difference. And luckily, many of the products we've mentioned can be easily purchased from Oakland Gardens. Check out the link in our video description for more information on where to find these essential seed starting supplies. There are numerous choices available when it comes to selecting the best composts for starting seeds. Various composts and seed starting mixes are readily accessible, with many of them consisting of low nutrient content and containing a substantial amount of sand and grit to ensure proper drainage. However, fret not, as even the most versatile multi-purpose compost or meticulously sieved homemade compost will suffice for your needs. To ensure optimal growth of your newly germinated seedlings, it's a wise practice to sift your compost, regardless of its composition and the seeds you're using. Any remaining pieces of wood that have not been decomposed could impede their development. A sieve with a grid measuring one eighth of an inch would be perfect for this task. If your compost is too dense, you may need to incorporate vermiculite or perlite to promote better drainage and to lighten the mix. Choosing the correct tray when sowing seeds is crucial to ensure successful growth. Many people believe that using a large tray or pot can eliminate the need for potting on. However, this approach can lead to various fungal diseases such as damping off disease, as the seeds or seedlings remain in damp compost that it cannot absorb. To prevent this, select a tray that allows the seedlings to reach the true leaf stage, which requires only a small amount of compost. As a general rule, choose a larger tray for bigger seeds and plants. For instance, lettuce can be grown in a small cell, while broad beans, also known as fava beans, require a much larger cell. I personally prefer using ContainerWise's heavy-duty plastic trays because of their exceptional strength, which I demonstrated in a previous video where I parked a fire engine on top of them. If you're interested, you can find a link to purchase these trays in the description below. When filling trays, it is necessary to compress the compost due to the cell size. This process yields two benefits. Firstly, it allows more compost to be packed into each cell, which ensures that there is sufficient compost for the seed to germinate. And secondly, compressing the compost enables that root ball to remain intact when transplanted, preventing any potential loss of compost from around the roots. If you've ever experienced compost falling from around the roots during transplanting, it's likely because the compost was not adequately compressed into the tray. However, it is crucial to use a gentle touch when compressing a compost, as excessive force can be detrimental to the seedlings. To enhance the success of your seed sowing, it's advisable to pre-water the compost due to the small size of certain seeds. You have two options to achieve this. Either fill the tray and then water, or follow the method I'm demonstrating here by pre-moistening the compost. By doing so, you can prevent the seeds from being washed away during the initial watering, giving them ample time to take root. It should be noted that the soil should have sufficient moisture to facilitate the germination of seedlings, 
and therefore avoid overwatering as this could lead to fungal infections. When it comes to sowing seeds, the depth of the plantings is a crucial factor to consider. A good rule of thumb is to sow seeds at a depth that is twice the size of the seed into the compost. However, it's important to note that small seeds such as lettuce require only a gentle covering or simply pressing them into the compost to ensure adequate contact. When covering over seedlings, compost or vermiculite can be used to great effect. After sowing, simply position the trays in your preferred spot to initiate germination. This could be a dedicated plant room, a specialised propagator, or even a sunny windowsill in your own home. Just keep in mind that it requires a warmth and well-lit environment. Once your seedlings have started to grow and thrive, it's time to think about transplanting them into their final growing positions. Some seeds like peas and beans can be sown directly into the ground outside and don't require transplanting. However, for other seeds like lettuce, it may be necessary to transplant them from pots into individual cells to allow them to grow on before planting out. It's important to get the timing right for transplanting as you want your seedlings to be relatively small and sturdy when you move them out into their new location. For example, if you're transplanting tomato seedlings, it's best to wait until the last frost has passed and that the plants are about six to eight inches tall before moving them into larger pots to keep them growing. When transplanting your seedlings, it's important to handle them gently and avoid damaging their roots. You may also need to water them more frequently during the first few days after transplanting to help them adjust to their new environment. Transplanting your seedlings is just the beginning of their journey towards becoming mature plants. Once your seedlings are in the new growing position, it's important to provide them with the care and attention they need to continue thriving. Proper watering, fertilizing, and pest control are all key components of seedling care and can make a big difference in the success of your garden. Taking care of your seedlings requires attention to detail and an understanding of the unique needs of each plant. Some seedlings like eggplants and chilies require warmer temperatures than others, like brassicas to thrive. It's important to monitor the temperatures in your growing area and adjust as needed to ensure your seedlings stay healthy. Watering is another important aspect of seedling care. Smaller cell trays and pots will require more frequent watering than larger ones as they dry out more quickly. When watering your seedlings, it's best to use tap water rather than rainwater, as rainwater can carry disease and bacteria that may harm your plants. Be sure to water your seedlings carefully, preventing overwatering and the development of damping off disease. As your seedlings grow, they may also require additional nutrition to thrive. If nutrition in your compost has been fully utilized and you're unable to pot on, it may be necessary to lightly feed your plants to ensure that they have nutrients they need. Light levels and duration are also important factors to consider when caring for your seedlings. At this time of year, it's important to provide your plants with enough light to encourage healthy growth once your seedlings are ready to be transplanted outside, it's also important to properly harden them off before you moving them out and putting them into their final growing positions. With proper care and attention, your seedlings will be well on their way to becoming healthy, mature plants. So we've covered everything from getting started with the right equipment to caring for your seedlings and transplanting them to their final growing positions. If you're ready to take your garden to the next level, I hope that this video has given you the knowledge and confidence you need to get started. If you're interested in learning more about seed sowing, then this is the next video that you should watch. I'm Tony O'Neill, this is Simplified Gardening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.